With an 18-inch tongue, you could wipe your forehead and clean out your nose. You could even explore inside your ears, which would be really handy if you've got lots of earwax. About 2,000 tiny glands inside the ear produce the waxy matrix, but it's also mixed up with things like dead skin cells, bacteria, and fragments of hair. If you want to clear a room, other foods that will help to really cut the cheese include cabbage, broccoli, and onions. Every day, the average person releases around 10 messages from the interior, which is about three and a half pints of gas. Imagine if you could collect all that wind from, say, the entire population of Rhode Island. It would be enough gas to fill a hot air balloon, which is nothing to sniff at. So today, we should think ourselves lucky that answering the call of nature has become such a private, pleasurable experience. Perhaps that's why a recent survey showed that every year, Americans spend a total of two weeks in the smallest room in the house. To pass the time while sitting on the throne, 33% of people use the telephone, 47% are happy to just contemplate the future, and more than half of those surveyed retreat there to read in peace. The healthy human nasal system can produce up to two pints of snot a day. That means each year, you produce enough mucus to fill five bathtubs, more than 90 gallons of mucus. Luckily, you don't get to see most of it because you swallow it down the back of your throat. Just think what you could do if you could secrete a strand of spider silk. Weight for weight, spider silk is five times stronger than steel. Even more remarkable, spider silk is twice as elastic as nylon. and you'll discover a labyrinth of tunnels up to 15 feet long. They build nurseries, bedrooms, a pantry, a toilet, and emergency exits. But the most impressive part of their tunnel construction is the way prairie dogs invented their very own air conditioning system. The mounds at the openings of prairie dog burrows are built at different heights. Because higher places are windier, atmospheric pressure is reduced at the mouth of the top entrance. This effectively sucks air out of the tunnel. Meanwhile, at the lower mound, the relatively higher pressure forces fresh air down into the burrow. How would you like to build a dam that's 14 feet high, 23 feet thick at the base, and strong enough to support a family car? 
The biggest beaver dam was more than 2,000 feet long. That's big enough to stretch beneath the Brooklyn Bridge. And remember, beavers use nothing more than their teeth, paws, and bottom to build it. No one knows exactly what inspired the first Neolithic home designers to maneuver 25-ton slabs of granite around a field. But we do know that the whole monument is symmetrically arranged around a central axis. A processional avenue points directly to the spot on the horizon where the sun first appears on the 21st of June. This is the summer solstice, and every year at this time, the sun rises exactly on top of a stone in the center of the avenue. It's an extreme piece of design for people using Stone Age technology. The sun is the reason why the magnetic termite has to design such a strange home. It's very wide and very, very thin. The termites migrate within the nest because there can be a 40 degree temperature difference between the side in the shadow and the side in the sun and at midday because only the thin upper edge of the mound faces the sun the amount of heat absorbed by the nest is minimized it's a truly extreme piece of design especially when you consider that the builders are blind why when it comes to animal architecture the termite really is the moat in only a few hours you'd have an infant that could run at incredible speeds at 32 miles an hour your newborn baby could easily outrun Olympic sprinters All mammals, even humans, have a built-in diving reflex. As soon as cold water hits the face, the heart slows down. The blood vessels in the arms and legs constrict so less blood can flow through them. This conserves oxygen and heat for vital organs like the brain and heart by letting the extremities become icy cold. That's why babies, and even adults, can sometimes be resuscitated after being submerged for several minutes in icy water. It gets a head start because all its unborn brothers and sisters laid down their lives so it could grow. The sand tiger shark faces its biggest battle just to get out of the womb alive. Which is why the sand tiger shark. Compare those odds to your chances of being killed or seriously injured by a car. That's only one in 88. Even taking a bath is more dangerous. A bathtub-related fatality is just a 1 in 11,000 possibility. Somehow, the more than 1 in a million chance of being killed by a bear feels a little safer, given that the odds of being struck by lightning are only 1 in 39,000. But as the undead know all too well, blood isn't very nutritious. Which is why vampire bats have to drink up to their own weight in blood every day. That means Dracula would have to drink about 17 sticky gallons daily. Nearly a bathtub full of blood. Throwing a dinner party would be a real pain in the neck. 
because the human body only contains about 10 pints of blood. That means Dracula would have to put the bite on more than a dozen friends for dinner every night. Then we'd have to be built like one, and there are a number of features we'd need. Cheetahs are the only cats whose claws don't retract, which means they dig in like cleats when running. Our limbs would need to be long and slender to reduce our weight, but our chests would need to be huge to accommodate an enlarged heart and lungs. And we'd need a really big nose to feed lots of air to them. But of course, speed comes at a cost. And for the cheetah, it's longevity. If humans were the same relative sizes as male and female cichlids, it would be like a big guy weighing, say, 180 pounds, dating a woman who's only 1 30th of his size. That's only six pounds. Every day, an adult elephant needs to eat about 5% of its body weight in food. That's a lot of bales of hay, more than 50 tons every year. Imagine if we had an elephant's appetite. For the average man, eating 5% of his body weight would mean chewing through 9 pounds of bread every single day. That would add up to more than 3,000 loaves of bread a year. And we'd be cramming all that food into a mouth that's only a couple of inches wide. If you compare the size of our mouth to the size of our body, the ratio of 2% means that we have a relatively tiny mouth compared to body length. Now compare our little jaws with the huge mouth of the elephant. But then, everything on an elephant's body is enormous. So, relatively speaking, its mouth-to-body length ratio is only half that of a human. Not even the most flexible contortionist would be able to swallow something the size of their head, simply because of the way our jaw is connected to our skull. Most humans can only open their jaw to about 45 degrees. If we wanted to eat like a snake, first, we'd need to add an extra bone to our jaw to act as a double-jointed hinge. This extra bone would mean that we would be able to drop our jaw much lower. And that would give us the ability to open our mouth to a massive 150 degrees, just like the snake. But snakes have another trick. They can split apart their lower jaw, which allows the mouth to stretch much wider. With jaws like a snake, then we too could easily swallow food that's as big as our head. We would look very different if we had jaws proportional to those of an Argentinian wide-mouthed frog. Instead of having a mouth that's only about 2% of our body length, we'd be smiling out of jaws that were half the length of our body. Imagine how quickly you could eat your dinner with a mouth that was nearly three feet wide. Being able to swallow a whole watermelon could open up a new career in the world of competitive eating.
After all, it takes the fastest eaters in the world a quarter of an hour to swallow little more than 11 pounds of watermelon. 65 hard-boiled eggs would be just an appetizer, rather than a meal that takes competitive eaters more than six minutes to eat. And you could easily stuff seven hamburgers into your cheeks. Instead of having to chew through them one by one over 10 minutes like they do on the 4th of July at Coney Island. And that's why, out of all the awesome orifices in the animal kingdom, the wide mouth frog really is. All you'd need is one big meal that you'd swallow in a single bite. You'd slowly work it down to your stomach. And then it would be time for a nap while you digest your dinner. You'd need to find a place to rest undisturbed for four or five weeks. If you had table manners like a giant snake, you'd probably find yourself living alone. One reason is hidden in its mouth. Our mouth has 32 teeth specialized for cutting and grinding, but a great white shark doesn't chew its food. It has 56 seven centimeter long teeth for cutting flesh. And to keep them sharp, the shark has seven rows of replacements waiting in line, giving it a mouthful of 392 razor sharp teeth. We'd need an extreme mouth to fit in all those teeth and even bigger neck muscles to help power those jaws we'd be able to bite clean through bone with an estimated force that's eight times more than the average human bite. More than 140 kilograms per square centimeter. If you were as big and as strong as a lion, you'd have to bulk up with enough lean muscle to tip the scales at over 220 kilograms. You'd need a set of seven centimeter long razor sharp claws. And 10 centimeter fangs. A lion's bite has been measured at 70 kilograms per square centimeter, more than enough to shear through flesh and sinew. And you can't outrun the king of the beasts. It has a top speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Imagine if we had jaws like a crocodile. A study in 2002 found that a saltwater crocodile nearly five meters long slammed its jaws shut with more than 1,700 kilograms of force, the strongest bite yet measured. This would be like being hit by jaws that slam shut with the force of a small truck behind them. And since crocodile teeth are meant for holding, not chewing, Crocs rip their prey apart by spinning at up to 100 revolutions per minute. They don't call this the death roll for nothing. Criminologists agree that if we were looking for a human serial killer, it's likely to be male, unmarried, and aged between 20 and 30 years old. The profile for our most extreme killer couldn't be more different. We're looking for an adult female. She's pregnant and her appetite for blood will double her body size. Her weapons are like some kind of lethal Swiss army knife. There are blades for cutting, a hypodermic needle for injecting saliva, 
and a vacuum hose for sucking up blood. She'd be one scary femme fatale, if only she was more than a few millimeters long. No wonder then, that of all the deadly animals in the world, the mosquito really is. Blood is our most precious liquid asset. It carries life-giving oxygen to all parts of our body, thanks to 25 trillion red blood cells flowing through more than 1,500 kilometers of blood vessels. The average sized body contains about 5 liters of blood, which is pumped around the body thanks to the tireless activity of the heart. On a typical day, it will circulate more than 13,000 liters of blood. That means in a single year, your heart pumps enough blood to fill the fuel tanks of not one, but ten jumbo jets. Strangely enough, the answer has nothing to do with drinking blood. Humans, like vampire bats, would open a vein using their incisor teeth, which are sharp for cutting up food. Writers described vampires with large canine teeth because, as primates, were hardwired to be scared of fangs. An opened mouth fangy snarl is the classic sign of aggression for gorillas, chimps, and humans. Imagine if we had the specialized blood-sucking ability of the vampire bat. We'd be able to drink our own body weight in blood every day. If the average man was like a vampire bat, he'd be able to drink 180 cans of blood. But there's a problem with drinking that much liquid. Imagine being surrounded by a swarm of bloodthirsty females. Some people have recorded suffering 9,000 mosquito bites per minute. At that rate, you'd lose half the blood in your body in less than two hours. But some people pay to be bled for the good of their health. Bed bugs are number three in the countdown because they can drink more than seven times their weight in blood. Your average human dream of drinking that much fluid. It would be the equivalent of chugging back about 450 liters of blood. That's enough to fill seven kegs. Imagine if we could drink like a tick. We would need to swallow the contents of a swimming pool. That's more than 38,000 liters of blood. There is one man who came close to sucking up blood like a tick. It dissolved the cement holding it in place and dropped back to the ground to digest its extraordinary meal. And that's why, when it comes to sucking blood, the tick really is the...
That's because our ears are built to detect sounds moving through air, not water. When you ring a bell, the vibrating metal moves the air particles around it, which in turn bump into their neighboring particles. The sound we hear is the vibration wave traveling through the air particles at just over a thousand feet per second. But in the ocean, water particles are packed much closer together than air particles, which means that it's easier for them to bump into one another. That's why sound waves travel five times faster underwater. That's just too quick for our ears to distinguish which direction the sound comes from. But the silky shark can hear them, even though its ears are hidden inside its head with just two tiny external openings. Sound vibrations easily pass through the shark's body and into the ears specifically adapted to identify the direction of its prey. Sharks are famous for being able to detect the smell of blood in the water. But some volatile chemicals, such as the gases that might be liberated from a decaying whale carcass, are dispersed through air much more quickly than through water. A Russian sensory biologist has suggested that's why the oceanic white-tipped shark sometimes sticks its head out of the water. By holding its nose above the surface, it may be able to detect airborne scents and locate distant food sources more quickly than many potential competitors. But the oceanic white tip isn't the only thing that gains an advantage by sniffing the air. A human would have no chance in a race against the Porsche of the pooch world. It only takes about three seconds for sprinters to reach top speed, but the dog will already be in the lead. A greyhound can hit 69 kilometers an hour, nearly twice as fast as the best human sprinters. That's because the Greyhound covers the ground much faster, since each stride is more than twice as long as a human's. And despite being much smaller than a human, some dogs have relatively huge hearts. The Greyhound's heart is about the same size as ours, and it beats almost twice as fast to keep their muscles supplied with energizing oxygen. So when it comes to racing a dog, it's just no contest. Dogs are much better at picking up odors than we are, because when it comes to sniffing, size really does matter. If we wanted to smell things as well as a dog, we'd need a much bigger nose. A big snout has much more room for the receptor cells that detect odors. A human nose has about 40 million smell receptors covering an area of about 12 square centimeters. But if we had a snout like a dog, we'd be able to fit over 200 million receptor cells in an area 10 times larger than our nose. Even the shape of the nose enhances the dog's ability to sniff. Air is drawn straight into the nostrils, but exhaled out the side of the nose, so it doesn't interfere with the scent trail. We'd have a very different view of the world if we had a nose like a dog. Countries until an elite few finally managed to conquer the world. But our first contender has just started its march across the globe. From its home around Indonesia, one snake's managed to slide into 10 other countries. From its home in South America, 
It's hard to imagine how the monk parakeet could have managed to spread across the northern hemisphere. It's now found in 17 countries, from California through to Spain. Like the monk parakeet, this invasive insect has spread from Argentina and conquered at least 21 other countries. There are billions of Argentine ants in millions of genetically related nests stretching from Italy to Spain, a distance of more than 3,700 miles. There really is a swarm heading north from South America. They're the so-called killer bees, and with them comes a wave of fear and misinformation sweeping across each of the 25 countries they invaded. It's hard to imagine the cute little bunny as a world conqueror, but it leapt out of its home in Spain to invade 29 other countries. The next contender seeking world domination was originally found in the countries bordering the Indian Ocean, but has since invaded at least 36 other nations. Our next contender is a poisonous amphibian that's hopped around most of the Pacific and has set up home in at least 39 countries. Our next contender has made the world its home. The house cat is the most widespread terrestrial. Our next contender has managed to both conquer the globe and terrify humans for centuries. Scurrying in to number two in the... The world's most extreme global conqueror has been following humans since the dawn of history. When it comes to flirting, studies have shown that the average guy chooses from about 10 flirtatious moves to attract a female. Women, however, can call on any one of more than 50 flirty signals, and they can use these moves as many as 80 times every hour to show men they're interested. The most universal signals are the eyebrow flash, the coy smile, and the exposed neck. You can tell if a guy's interested if he stands with his hands on his hips, touches his face while looking at you, or moistens his lips. But even with all the right moves, it turns out that geography can also have an influence on your flirting success, at least according to a survey by Match, an online dating agency. Apparently, Portland, Oregon is the place to meet your perfect match if you're a few kilos overweight. People here appreciate bulk more than anywhere else in America. Men who are vertically challenged may consider moving to Texas, where a disproportionately high number of women are prepared to date men shorter than 167 centimeters. But if you're a redhead, it may pay to stay clear of Miami, Florida. People there find redheads the least attractive. For what it's worth, the majority of women describe their ideal man as bold, assertive, flirtatious, non-smoking social drinker, who's intelligent, and can dance. This is the only known example where a parasite actually replaces the body organ it destroys. So think yourself lucky that the tongue biter only lives in fish. Imagine what it would be like if a tongue biter decided to live inside your mouth. It would grab hold of your tongue with its strong back legs. Then it would suck so much blood that your tongue would totally disintegrate. Some researchers have suggested that the crustacean may act as a replacement for your tongue, helping you swallow food so that you'd stay alive while the tongue biter feeds. 
And while the tongue biter also helps the snapper to swallow its food, it's thought that once the parasitic crustacean dies, so does its host. It's a one-sided relationship, which is why this odd couple is only number 10 in the countdown. Which is why when it comes to extreme couples, the Greenland shark and its parasitic crustacean really are the most extreme. Imagine if you had feet like a gecko. Cleaning windows would suddenly become much easier. Researchers using microelectrical mechanical sensors have discovered that the hairs covering the gecko's feet are incredibly strong for their size. If we could cover our feet with the hairs from the feet of just two geckos, the molecular attraction would be sufficient enough to support a fully grown human. If you moved like a gibbon in the rainforest, you'd be so high up in the air that it would be like swinging between the cables on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. But when it comes to swinging, gibbons have a huge advantage over humans. If we were built like a gibbon, we'd have arms more than twice the length of our body. This remarkable shellfish takes a deep breath and flies. It's a nice trick for an animal with no limbs. And that's why, when it comes to moving, the scallop really 